Well, let's see. It looks like we're about ready to get started with game one. Yes, we are indeed. Game one of a 15, um, maybe even 16 if we have a tie break m uh, game match here. Had to think about that for a while. Starting off with Chronic in Beast Mode against First Killer and Daniel. Um, this is going to be an incredible series of games. We've also got LJ waiting his turn to join in. Uh, he'll be joining for game two. But first of all, let me introduce the players for those of you who are not familiar with them. Um, Daniel and Beast Mode and First Killer, I think, have been long regarded as the top three guys in North America, um, just in, for, for Rocket League in general. Um, now, now's a chance for them to prove that that is, in fact, true. Um, but also joining them in the field right now is Chronic, who has had a banger of a season so far for Gen.G and has a pretty good 2v2 tournament record as, as well, uh, mostly teaming with LJ, who's on the bench right now. So. Yeah, a lot of people saying, you know, maybe LJ doesn't deserve to be here, so and so should be in instead of him. I think, you know, in fact, LJ's broken the uh, 2v2 MMR world record at the end of last season. Uh, beating Monkey Moon proves that he does belong in this lobby. And, uh, yeah, him and Chronic have got a great tournament record against the best players in North America. Pretty much the second most successful 2v2 team as of late after Beast Mode Daniel. Uh, First Killer didn't really have it. I, as far as I'm aware, one solid twos teammate for the past year. He's been you know, playing with a bunch of different players. Chronic and LJ, very successful combination. Can't wait to see what they do uh, today. Yeah, Chronic, the Chronic LJ versus Dan Beast Mode is going to be a cool game. That's going to be one of the most anticipated games, I think. Apologies, just one second. Let me move. I've got something blocking my alert box. I can't see you guys. So I wanted to say thank you to Iron Solid for the Prime. Welcome to the channel. Slow start here for both teams. Very back and forth. Um, now, if you watch the KSA 2v2 the other day, the two, little 2v2 version of this that I did with the KSA players recently, um, you'll already notice big playstyle differences between KSA and USA players, just as we saw between KSA and French players. The KSA players were just absolutely booming the ball around the field with every touch, it would seem. Um, and then the French players were playing a lot more tight-knit Rocket League, lots of 50-50s, lots of passing plays. Um, and I expect from USA, these guys that are on the field right now, to see um, not quite as much boomer ball, but exactly what we're seeing right here. Lots of solo plays, lots of air dribbling. So a different type of play style again seems to be the preference. Um, none of them really, I think, has the uh, the rain over the other. They're, they're, they're just preferences. Um, but yeah, the, the US players tend to prefer to solo play to force the defenders out of position or force them to lose boost. Um, and then the other player will come in and make a solo play of their own or maybe uh, clean up the scraps. Um, of course, that's just the overall tendencies. You're going to see, uh, you know, passing plays. You're going to see demos. You're going to see lots of booming uh, clears from these guys as well, just as you do from... Um, any top tier players. I'm, I'm very curious to see if the tendencies that we are often hearing about from uh, pros who talk about the differences in ranked between the EU and the NA server are going to make an appearance in these games. Now, just like I did for games uh, 6 through 10 in the France version of this, I will choose one player's POV to watch for the entirety of each of those games. Um, so we'll go one player POV for five games in a row, one different player every time. Really try to get inside their heads and see what they're doing. But for the first five games, this being game one, we're just going to be switching POV, seeing who can get the best start. It's looking good for Beast Mode. That's the second goal for him. Chronic has uh, played great defense this game. Beast Mode has torn First Killer and Daniel apart. With uh, a minute and 44 left, they're up 2-0. Okay. Keeping Daniel and First Killer scoreless. Very impressive stuff. Are they in comms for this? I believe that they are. I say I believe because, um, well, actually, I don't know if this will still show for you. If there's a goal in, I can show you why I think they're in comms. <laughs> you guys might uh, might enjoy some behind the scenes here, but I won't interrupt the gameplay for now. Let's see if there's uh, if there's going to be another goal first. You didn't know Beast Mode is popping up. Beast Mode has been uh, one of the absolute best 2v2 players in North America for a, for a good while now. He's a monster. Um, and twos ranked. He's he's been the highest rated North American twos player several times. Uh, so has LJ. You know, first killer and Daniel. Whenever they feel like it, they can get very high rated. And honestly, same with Chronic. These guys are all ladder beasts. They're all ranked monsters. Um, we'll find out today who's the best at just adapting to their teammates. We're not going to get any same teammates two games in a row. You might see the same teammates um, in you know 
two games that are sandwiched by a different game. Um, but never twice in a row if I've done this format correctly. First killer trying to get the opening goal. Oh my goodness, Gornick almost own gold off the back of this. <laughs> he got quite lucky there. They might still get a goal here. First killer dying. No, it's not going to sit nicely for them. They're really pressing at the end of the game. Ball just not sitting uh, low enough as it finds itself the crossbar. First killer wanting Daniel to boom the ball across. Daniel incapable with the momentum that he had. First killer trying to launch it down the line, but it's gone more straight forward. Conceded possession. End to end stuff here. Now Beast Mode's going to try for a ceiling double. Ceiling reset. Backward double, I should say, but it's really not necessary at this point. They just have to let the clock win this. And they'll start off with ones next to their name. Leaving uh, Daniel and First killer with zeros. Early days yet, but as we saw in the France 2v2 version of this, you know, the players that get a strong start are often the players who finish strong as well. Zen and, and Monkey Moon who got the best start in France. They were the players who finished uh, the strongest also. Okay, let me see if I can show you guys why I think these guys are in comms. So I was telling them about the rules here. I was just explaining the format to any of them who um, might not be familiar. And I said, any questions? And then at the exact same time, Daniel Beast Mode and First Killer all replied, okay, comma, no. These messages were, they were all boom, 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 like at the same time. So I was like, right, they're in comms. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> now, there's no rules about this. <laughs> they're allowed to be in comms if they want to be. But <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. They, they've not told me if they are or if they're not. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've got a sneaky suspicion that they are. <laughs> so game two, Beast Mode, LJ against Chronic and Daniel. Let's just jump straight into it. Maybe a coincidence. If they all said no, it could be a coincidence, but the OK comma no, I doubt it. I doubt that that's a coincidence. Uh, let me update the scores on the screen here. I wanted to get this second game up and running as quickly as possible. Nice and easy here. Just the two players at the top with one next to their name. And uh, let's see if Beast Mode or Chronic will be the first player to get a two next to their name. Guaranteed to have someone on two wins at the end of this one as their two game one winners are now playing against each other. Uh, but welcome LJ to the lobby now. Oh my goodness, Daniel's demoed everybody. Chronic's got a wide open backboard. Not a wide open goal though, he needed to slot that and he did. Daniel getting physical here. Didn't need to play the ball, just clapped beast mode. Even bumped LJ on the recovery as well. Brilliant stuff by Daniel. Um, yeah, LJ, I, I, a lot of people are questioning this guy on Twitter and uh, even in my live chat as we went live here. Great save by beast mode there, just rolling it up the back wall. Needed a very precise touch. Um, but yeah, I just want to double down and say it. LJ absolutely is one of the top five 2v2 players in North America. I think he's probably being a bit underrated right now by the um, the casual Rocket League uh, esports audience because of Space Station Gaming's um, recent struggles. You know, they, they got rid of Rettles, who's a fan favorite, um, replaced him with a relatively newer player to the scene in LJ. So obviously he's, he's under a ton of pressure there to deliver and Space Station Gaming as a whole have not uh, delivered. I don't really think that's on, on LJ personally though. I, you know, when they made that move, I did call it a, you know, short term, a lateral move. I expected kind of the same results from them because I, and that's mostly because I rate Rettles very highly, not because I don't think LJ has what it takes to be on a top team. Um, but long term, I, I think that's a great pickup for Space Station. I think LJ's got immense potential. I think he's only going to improve the longer he's in the pro scene. And uh, I think Space Station Gaming's recent struggles are, you know, the full team struggling to synergize, definitely not LJ um, as an individual. Yeah, when it comes to 2v2, I mean, he recently broke the world record for ranked 2's MMR. That is exactly, you know, what you need to be doing to get into a lobby like this. Because uh, what we're looking at here is basically um, just a faster, more high-level version of ranked 2's. If all these guys queued up at the same time in ranked right now, um, solo queuing, they would maybe run into each other a few times. Maybe they would get the same teammate twice in a row. Maybe they get the same opponent twice in a row. Maybe the queue times would take a long time. Um, maybe there would be some random players that they're not sure ab uh, about in the in the lobbies. But right now, we're just getting instant game after game. Same five players in different combinations every single time. Uh, hopefully, these guys enjoy it as much as the French players did, who didn't want to. They didn't seem to want to stop playing um, even after 16 games, over two hours of non-stop 2v2. I think intermittent, the intermittent breaks do help with that, though. Right now, um, first killers sitting this this game out. LJ sat out uh, the last game. After this, it will be Chronic, I believe. Sitting, no, sorry, it will be it will be Daniel sitting out. Uh, then Chronic, and then lastly Beast Mode, who could win his first four games if he gets a comeback here. Right now, it's Chronic, the guy to beat, who's uh, trying to make a solo play on Beast Mode and LJ. LJ stops him. 
Yeah, type 1 in chat if you think so far this has been playstyle wise what you've expected. I know a lot of you in chat are going to be very familiar with these guys' gameplay and ranks because um, they're often making appearances on the streamers uh, who do stream high ranked 2v2 from North America. For me, this is exactly what I expected. Lots of high flying air dribble plays. Um, you know, the, n these aren't expected to go into the goal, but what they're trying to do is just force bad recoveries, force uh, boosts to be wasted, and then uh, give their teammates behind them a chance to, to follow up. It's exactly the play style that Jan and Loss dominated the um, NA2's playlist with when they first came over. Of course, that didn't translate too well to two's show matches, but at least when it comes to rank, that seems like the way to go in the US East server. Running air dribbling past uh, one, or attempting to, he got shut down actually. Right, LJ, you know, he's got a zero next to his name right now, but he is undefeated. He's not trying to pre-jump Daniel, who just stays grounded. Other thing, of course, to mention, I know you guys love talking about kickoffs, but yeah, when, when we did the KSA version of this, they were going for loads of fake kickoffs, loads of demo kickoffs. Uh, the French players were pretty much back corner, or not back corner, so they, they were pretty much close cheating with a dead ball kickoff every single time. Now, for North America, one thing you will probably need to look out for um, is the fake kickoff prevalence. These guys love to, not sorry, I keep, I keep saying the wrong words. The back corner kickoff prevalence is what I meant to say. Um, NA players love to knock the ball to the back corner. Uh, they'll be mixing cheat, cheat kickoffs in there with them, but it's all about possession and boost for these guys. That's the thing that they're always trying to get in their matches. Low scoring. Uh, first two games here. Very defensive play and you know by that I just mean that there's usually two players for both teams behind the ball at all times you're not seeing many players lingering upfield for bumps redirects boost steals it's often well whenever the other team of the ball a two-man defense um, very standoff as well beast mode wanting to force Daniel up here but really what's he going to get out of that not a lot chronic and LJ or uh, Kronika Daniel, I'm, I'm sorry. They've done a really good job in this game. Oh, hold on a second though. Beastman nearly slotted it through with a mind game. I'm not sure how he managed to get through there. But into the ground it goes. And that means that Kronik is going to be the player with the two next to his name after the first two games. And uh, Daniel joining them with the one next to his name. Okay, game three now. We've got Beast Mode staying on for the first four. He's going to be with First Killer. I, I think I can't fit First Killer's full name in. It's too long. So I'll just write first. Goodbye to Daniel for now. Yeah, Daniel's going to be sitting out. It's Chronic and LJ. Well, look at this. This is interesting. The first of the Chronic LJ games. There's going to be three of them. They've definitely um, been given a chance to prove themselves early here because a lot of people asking, what are these guys doing in the lobby with the three best players in North America? Not me, mind you. I, I think they belong here. That's why I invited them. A lot of people are asking, why are these guys here? Let's see if they can show everyone why they're here. Um, they've, they've done it phenomenally well in 2v2 tournaments together. Can they reproduce that in a very stacked lobby? Most stacked twos lobby you can get, for, I think, with five players in NA right now, probably ever. Yeah, USA is one of those countries with a whole host of 2v2 talent. You know, just like France the other day, we did not have to exhaust all the 2v2 talent to get five world-class players in a lobby. We, you know, had five without the presence of uh, Radosin, Fairy Peak. Um, and other uh, you know, Seiko and more that I'm probably forgetting right now. You know, a, a USA likewise, lots of uh, options when it comes to 2v2 talent. AJ is uh, is one of them. You know, the G2 players also uh, very high rated 2v2 players when they want to be. Garrett G's been grinding twos a bunch recently. You know, we could definitely do a USA version two of this. What do you mean Fairy Peak lol? Fairy Peak's always super high rated and very consistent in twos. I don't think you'll see a single French player complaining if they solo queue and they get Fairy Peak in their team. Uh, he's, he's very, very good at twos ranked. Yeah, I was saying uh, last time I streamed one of these, I'll repeat this because it's relevant to the current match that we're watching. Um, I would love to see the winner of this match. Oh, what a pass. Right, LG Chronic, thank you so much for showing everybody why they're wrong about you guys and why you do belong here. That is a picture perfect pass from LJ and a <laughs> perfect shot from Chronic as well. Absolutely gorgeous. And like I was saying, last time I streamed I was talking about how I want to get the winner of today's USA lobby, perhaps if they want to, um, into another twos lobby against all of the import talent uh, who are best at twos in North America. Of course I'm thinking of players like Appjack, um, Jan when he's back in uh, America. 
uh, Rays Bowl, CRR. I think that'd be really cool at five different countries uh, all in one US East uh, twos lobby. There's other others that could be represented as well, of course. Most obvious uh, one is Canada. Well, I'm not sure who the clear number one Canadian uh, 2v2 player is right now. I'm not honestly sure. I'd have to, to go and do some digging about that. The beast mode first killer. Two of the absolute best players in NA for the past year in RLCS. I think probably the two best players in NA up against it, but now equalizing against their newer opponents to the NA scene. He bumped there from first killer. Not sure if LJ would have made it back, but still important that he gave Beast Mode as much time as possible. Where's first killer from? I believe he's from um, Florida, I think. Well, I think he lives in Florida if he's not from there. Pretty sure he lives there. Johnny Boy not an Atomic Believer. I mean, I said I, I literally said the G2 players are not Atomic's pretty high rated into Chicago. I'm not sure about JNAPS. Um, probably is, but I don't know. First goal, he's actually got a long shot second goal here. That's a really good shot, actually. I'm glad that we waited to see that again, because he got so much power at the end of that short air dribble. Getting the ball way over the top of his opponent. Now Chronic forces the ball left. Beast Mode's up first, but he doesn't get the best touch here. That's going to be free reign for LJ. A lot of boost being used here. Not, un not able to get a reset. So the first touch appeared to be a bit too heavy. Now Chronic, very importantly, did not use any of his 100 boost there. That allowed LJ to pick up the boost that Chronic was actually driving over. Of course, a little pro tip there for anyone new to Rocket League. If you have 100 boost, you're not going to actually pick up any of the boost pads that you drive over, so you can leave them for a teammate, um, even if you are pathing straight over it. It's great awareness by Chronic to dodge the bump blind. Right, he's a bit further away from far the first killer from the play here. First killer in beast mode have wrestled back control of game three. We want to... Well, first killer, he wants to get on the board. Beast mode wants to join Chronic on two points at the moment. They really boost served them well here. LJ gluing himself to the ball as best as he can. Looks like Chronic found time to grab the back corner boost. Oh no, he didn't. He still doesn't have it. But he's managed to outplay one. Uh, fakes it middle. Attempting to fake it middle for LJ. Boost has been a real struggle for Chronic and LJ in this second half of this game. Let's see if they can make something happen. Now they finally have it. No, they can't. First killer demos Chronic midair. LJ has to buy time. Now, the ball's just bounced up there, but uh, that reminds me of something. I want to ask you guys a quick question. Uh, this might just be me with a, a placebo, or maybe I've, you know, just got um, gotten worse at Rocket League. But I've been playing a bit of Rocket League recently myself, and since the new patch, I swear the, the ball, like, just bounces off the wall when it's supposed to roll now. I don't know if that's just me. I could show you a replay later as soon as we're done watching the replay of Chronic's goal. But is that type one in chat? This is happening to you after the recent patch. I swear this is happening to me. Like the balls, it looks like it's going to roll up the sidewall. You know what I mean? When it's rolling in the ground, curves up, and then it it bounces way more than it should. I, I you guys are all saying two. I swear it's happening. It's just the new map. Is it the new map? Interesting. Very interesting. Scottish copium. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's just Scottish Copium. Great speed by Beast Mode here. The awareness as well. He's left ball cam off there so he can see exactly where his opponents are. And he still managed to get back to the ball the quickest. Streams lag spiking, by the way. I don't think it is. If it's lagging for you, it's probably on your end. Or it might be on Twitch's end, but it's fine on my end. Uh, maybe give the stream a quick refresh. So far, deserved lead from Beast Mode and First Killer, who have out-pressured... Chronic and LJ. Chronic and LJ synergized really well at the start of this game, but they've been outpaced and kind of bullied into submission for the rest of it. Now they're just pulling survival mode as they try to make a comeback happen. LJ launches it up to Chronic. He's going to need to try a corner double at this rate, but that's well out of reach. Too easy for far scaler and beast mode. This just looks like more likely to be another goal for first and B mode at this rate. They don't even want to keep it up to try Intelligent play, of course, and a one-goal advantage. I'm sure in ranked, most of you guys would have just kept that up for the memes, but these guys don't want to be the player losing 
uh, this lobby. Who uh, right now, unfortunately for LJ, uh, he is him. <laughs> He's him who's losing the lobby. But that, that's just two games in for him. Uh, this will be his third. This time he gets to play with beast mode against first and uh, Daniel. LJ gonna do an alpha. You need to lose two more if he's gonna pull an alpha 54 off. He's gonna need to lose two more games in a row. Hey, I forgot actually to ask you guys who your favorite to win was. Did we get a prediction for uh, chat to get their their beans on the line here? I, I don't know if we did. If, you know, it's a bit late now to to do that, but. I can honestly say, going into this, um, that my individual favorite to win this. Can you, anyone guess who I'm going to say first of all? Who do you guys think? Who do you guys think I had winning? Actually, most people saying Daniel and First Skiller, I believe. Actually, quite a few Chronics. Maybe you guys are just talking about who you think's going to win. Um, honestly, my favorite to win is is Beast Mode, the guy that we're on board with right now. Um, him and Daniel, I expect them to just get three wins when they play, when Beast Mode and Daniel play, which they haven't played together yet. I think they're just going to get three wins, um, which will be good for them. And then between Beast Mode and Daniel, I expect to see Beast Mode be the, the better player at gelling with his uh, teammates. Now, Daniel, first skiller, uh, honestly, everyone in this lobby, LJ Chronic as well, but a lot of people are going to say Daniel, first skiller, favorites to win it. I think the favorite is Beast Mode, um, because in the uh, KSA, Saudi Arabia, and the France 2v2 lobbies that we've already done, the players who came out on top were the best players at just playing around their teammates. Roas dominated the KSA lobby. He was very um, good at just filling the blanks that his teammates would uh, need filled. Mostly with his uh, league of his own defense. Um, and Monkey Moon, same thing for EU, but a slightly different style. He didn't do it with goal line defense like Roas did. That's because uh, his teams didn't really need that. What his teams needed was pressure on the ball so that he could get get some space for his teammate to make a massive play. So yeah, Beast Mode is capable of making the solo plays himself. We've already seen several in the in the three games we've watched. Um, yeah, he's also very just easy to play with I, from what I can see. So I'm saying, I'm saying Beast Mode, he lost his first game with Chronic. I think he's going to be the winner at the end of all this. But yeah, first killer and Daniel are incredibly competitive with this kind of thing. Um, Daniel, I think, shines when he respects his opponents, which he will today, I believe. Um, you know, he's, he, he kind of struggles early. He has struggled a bit more in 1v1 recently on my stream when he's the favorite to win by a long way. Um, sometimes he underperforms, but he'll probably just consider himself to be where exactly where he belongs in this lobby. Not the massive favorite, but definitely not the underdog. That's kind of where I think when Daniel shines. Yeah, I think he's a bit harder to play with. Same as first skiller. I think both these guys are just a bit harder to play with. You have to play around them. Uh, whereas when you're with Beast Mode, it just looks like people could do whatever they want. Beast Mode's teammate could just do whatever he wants, and Beast Mode is just where he's supposed to be. Beast Mode passed one here. LJ collects the ball, delays the flick, but that's going to be tough to go past Daniel at that angle. Beast Mode just stalling for time here, fakes the wall shot, grabs the boost, and takes the 50-50. LJ's actually started off going the wrong way there. That brings First Killer and Daniel into the play. Oh, great pass from first killer honestly should have been a goal that was an open bottom corner for Daniel to aim at he boomed the post oh, beast mode's out of the game again LJ's got some time to buy first killer loves it high up to Daniel looks like they I mean this again it might just be me but it really does look like the the rotations compared to both the Saudi lobby that we did and the French lobby that we did the rotations are much, much wider from our NA players, or USA players today. They, uh, the boost totals tend to be a lot higher as well because everybody's just leaving to get boosts a lot. And this is something I've talked about many times on my channel, not just for twos, but for 3v3 as well. Um, and that's, you know, the players in the US servers, I think they just like to go and get boost more um, than some of the EU server players. Of course, KSA players do play on the EU servers. Um, it's not a rule, that's more just a a standard that you expect. Yeah, right now we seem to be following that um, pretty accurately, which makes for a very exciting gameplay. We're going to get a lot of high-flying aerial play. These guys are starting to pass the ball with big lob, uh, lobs to right and left quite often. LJ, two games in a row now. You just can't find boost for extended periods of time. Beast mode 
Challenges solidly leaves the back corner. LJ didn't need it. He went the other way. This mod always has a recovery off the back of these plays. LJ scoops it the entire length of the pitch. Not sure if he meant to catch that one in the back well, but I don't think he'll be too sad about the uh, outcome. They are both ready to defend. LJ running back to the goal there, identifying the fact that Beast Mode is not going to recover quickly. For once. Usually does. Daniel down the line to first killer. What a pass. First killer's hit the post to double it. Blocked by LJ. Well, Daniel and first killer have had the better chances. That same post has denied them twice. And LJ with a very speculative flight path for this goal. That's not going to work. Daniel and first killer connect, and this time they do. Hit the target. Well, that was extremely aggressive for LJ. He's got to think that he's never going to get there. Perfect pass from Daniel. Offloads into the bottom corner. It goes. It can beast mode. Call out some last-minute heroics. He's got his dodge here, of course. Wants the top corner. LJ might actually have this. He does. Well, beast mode has just served him a goal on a silver platter here. Gets it over first kill. I think he might have even landed on Daniel. Yes, he did. He landed on Daniel to deny the save. Daniel looks like he would have had this. Oh, what a play by V1's beast mode. There's been rumors surfacing that him and, uh, him and Daniel are soon to be teammates come the next split um, on version one. I think Daniel's just chucked that contract in the, in the fire after that last goal. He's saying, beast mode, I don't like you anymore. I don't want to be your friend. Can he finish the job though? This is for number one. Beast mode chain dashes the entire length of the pitch. He's left LJ very alone here. LJ does well, but he had to take a very wide line to avoid the bump there. Now first killer steals the boost away. This is a pretty tricky situation for LJ and Beast mode. They're both trying to chain dash to keep pace up in the position. But they've lost control and now here comes first killer again. Air roll shot denied. Beast mode seven boost. LJ with no boost, but somehow he's nearly scored. <laughs> he almost Scores off a 50-50. Daniel lurking upfield. He's intercepted by LJ. Beast mode booms at the full length of the pitch. Wanted a redirect, but wasn't able to get the glancing blow that he went for. Deceptive reset there from Daniel. Red well by LJ. Beast mode air dribbles to the ceiling. Delays his dodge. It's a piece of the ball that first killer was trying to clear. LJ had an option of a mid-pass there, decided it would be a bit too obvious. Instead just shoots it directly. You don't always have to go for that mid-pass just because it's available. Sometimes it's better just to leave it as a distraction, leave it as a threat that the goalkeeper has to think about. Big bounce in field here, LJ beats his man. Daniel looks like he might be running out of boost a little bit here. First killer is also running dry. Beast mode has 100. And he's stolen away the back corner. This is uh, First Killer and Daniel getting a taste of their own medicine. And then once again, Beast Mode brings his teammate into the play with perfection. After crushing First Killer at a 50-50, that was disgusting. He just drove right through it. <laughs> what a game by Beast Mode. Perfectly timed as well. Really making my prediction look as accurate as possible. That puts him into the lead um, with three points. And it gets LJ on the board with one. Uh, but okay, Beast Mode's enough enough winning. Uh, time for him to take a break. He's going to get his first uh, game from the spectate slot in the lobby. Let's bring back everyone else. Um, first and LJ teaming up for, the, I believe, the first time against Chronic and Daniel, who have played and won earlier on against Beast Mode and LJ. Chance for um, Chronic to tie Beast Mode with three points out of a possible four. Um, we're, this is game five, but everybody at the end of game five will have played four times each. Chronic's the only player who can tie Beast Mode with a 75% win rate. Uh, the other three players just looking to go 50-50. Couple of shoutouts here before we get back into the action here. Daniel scoring an open net meanwhile. It's a very nice half-flip challenge. Outplays Diving LJ as well. Iron Solid and I, 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 X, XXO 
See, XXOC, not sure if that's supposed to be Roman numerals, but thanks for the primes, guys. Absolute trash IRL, thanks for 31 month tier one. Uh, Willy Poo and It's Claw, thanks for the primes. And Voss two times, thanks for the two month tier one as well. Appreciate the support, guys. Hope you're enjoying. Hope you're enjoying the two v two action tonight. Oh, LJ booms it upwards. Looks like neither Chronic or Daniel really wanted to play that. Daniel sat in net, thinking Chronic was going to go. Um, Chronic couldn't get there. It gave a free shot, open net just briefly here. Tough angle though. Very difficult to get a power shot on net from there. This is a kind of a must win for First Killer and uh, LJ if they want to keep up with Chronic and Beast Mode. It's, it's bad news if you fall, you know, a couple of points behind two different players. If you fall behind one player, it's a little bit easier to come back. Fall behind two, you really have to, you know, go undefeated in the rest of your matches against them to bring it back. Oh dear, that's not the read that the blue team needed. It's actually. Daniel, he missed it. He thought that was going to roll, I guess. Um, see, it was on the wall. And it's actually just bounced straight middle. I mean, that didn't look like a bad bounce. I'm talking earlier about the maybe maybe there's some bad bounces in the new patch, but that looked fine. <laughs> that looked uh, that just looked like a misread. Thanks to BB, Darren913, and Ktrox for the Primes, and the Tier 1, respectively. Appreciate you guys. Now, the... France lobby that we did. Oh my, what is going on here? Can I talk about something for a second without being rudely interrupted by another bad goal? Oh no, LJ just couldn't find any boost. What a disaster. Yeah, you went you went for a back corner that's not spawning. I mean, that, that boost is gone for a while. That was just a, you know, a bad flip from LJ. I think he should have probably known that that boost wasn't coming back. But I believe that, that wasn't a replay bug, was it? I'm pretty sure someone just took it uh, before he dove to that corner, right? Um... Yeah, like I was going to say, the, the France version of this that we did the other day, the players did not seem to fall off in level at all throughout the two hours that we played, um, or had games being played. I don't expect the uh, US players to fall off in level either, but it is worth mentioning some of them have just come from uh, scrims either one hour or two hours ago. So, the, you know, there might be possibly some Rocket League fatigue the further we go into this. I don't expect so, though. These guys are all ranked grinders they all put in a ton of hours to the game on the regular and they do get to sit out one game every five so it's a nice little break to um get up stretch your legs stay hydrated and all that good stuff that i'm sure all of you guys are doing throughout this stream this is level below french lobby i seriously doubt it i i don't think so um i think that's probably an inaccurate statement now a lot of NA pros have gone on record saying that EU ranked is um, better quality practice than NA ranked for 2v2. But that's not to say that the, the best EU 2v2 players are simply better than the best NA 2v2 players. It's just a different playstyle. Um, and, you know, I think the, the, the playstyles I was describing at the start of this match, they're kind of, uh, you know, what you see in ranked but uh, it, it's it's more annoying when you're watching a teammate that you don't know making a solo play. What a save by first killer. And when your teammate's Daniel and he's making a solo play. You know, I don't think anyone in North America is annoyed uh, when they queue up ranked because they get Daniel on your team and Daniel starts solo air dribbling. But if you queue up for, you know, US East ranked and your uh, teammate is, uh, I don't know, I'm not trying to call anyone out here. Let's say you get a teammate that you've never heard of called uh, Jim Bob 69 and he's just air dribbling every play and getting nowhere it's going to get pretty pretty annoying because uh, every single air dribble that they go for is just rubbish and they're just giving the ball away and wasting all their boost so you know if it's this play style is fine when you are the best players in the in the world which these guys are but when you're not the best players in the world you're just trying to copy the best players in the world this is not the play style you want to go for oh my goodness what a save again Marskiller and LJ are Really putting up a great defensive stand here. But does that make sense, guys? That's that's my genuine opinion of the matter. I think that if you put the best two, 2v2 teams from NA against the best 2v2 teams from EU, MENA, South America, I think it would all be very close. Um, but I think play style-wise, EU style of play for 2v2 ranked is just a more 
fun style to play when you're playing with a random teammate you don't know. Because uh, it's a bit of an easier style to, to synergize with. These guys all know each other really well, so I think they're going to synergize just fine. This is not ranked. This is a five-player stacked mix-up twos lobby. Brilliant defensive read by LJ again. I'm very impressed by LJ and first killer's defense in this game. Some unbelievable goal line saves. Daniel and Chronic still knocking at the door for a minute here. Actually, it's first killer who decides to keep the ball up. For a second, I thought somebody disconnected, but it's just Beast Mode joining the match again, making me panic. Is this our first overtime? I think it's our first overtime of the day. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Daniel and Chronic will feel like they should have won this. They've been absolutely scammed by some world-class saves. It's the second one? Okay, you guys keep me right. Thank you very much. I have to forgive me if I'm a little bit more um, forgetful tonight. It is one in the morning. I'm not quite as uh, not quite as aware of what, what's going on when I'm casting at one in the morning as opposed to... You know, what, what time was the other day that we did the French version of this? It was much earlier. I was uh, feeling a lot more focused for that one. <laughs> Much more normal time to be casting Rocket League. That's a read by Daniel. You know, launches himself back into the play with some wave dashes. Yeah, I think it was 8 p.m. UK time, so it was around about, well, it was exactly four hours earlier than we started this one. Um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling pretty fresh, though. I'm on a late sleep schedule right now. You might have spotted me a couple of days ago on T Bait stream if you missed it. Um, yeah, me and Yummy Cheese Man were carrying T-Bates in uh, US West 3v3, or trying to carry. I think we actually went overall even in uh, matches. Wait! Did Daniel just save Chronic Shot? I think the goalkeeper might have got there. We have to save the replay. I think the goalkeeper might have got there. Probably Daniel had to do something there. But uh, hitting the post was not what you, tr what you had to do. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Right, he's got a chance to redeem himself here. Not enough boost to really get much done. Chronic immediately jumps. Lots of boost being invested in this play. He's trying to manage what little he has. Um, and even saves 20 for the recovery. That's, I think, a really good idea there by Chronic. Didn't look like he was going to get a goal off that. So he might as well recover, let Daniel come in. Um, I think that these guys are in comms, or at least I think some of them are. We have sneaky suspicion Daniel Beast Mode first killer in comms. So it would be, a, you know, maybe they're all in comms and <laughs> they just didn't invite Chronic and LJ. That would be a bit harsh. Yeah, very. Sweaty overtime here. Daniel wants the reset double. LJ just camping on the back wall to deny him. But it looks like Chronic might have found an opening. Indeed he has. And he will join Beast Mode on three wins. After five games have been played, Beast Mode and Chronic are 75% wins. Daniel has split the games 50-50. And it's actually First Killer and LJ who are one out of four. I think we did it just in time. Okay, for this game, we're going to spectate um, beast mode for the whole game. We're going to take one player at a time and uh, spectate only their POV for a whole game. He didn't bean it. I don't think he beaned it either, but it's sort of interesting to look back and see you know, his POV, see exactly what he was. I think he was just trying to redirect it in because he knew the goalkeeper was going to save it. He needed to do something, but just not exactly what he did. Okay. Beast Mode Pov for Game 6. We've got Beast Mode against Chronic. Somebody's going to be on 4 out of 5 after this game. Um, guaranteed. One of Beast Mode and Chronic guaranteed to be 4 wins out of 5, which is a ridiculously good start, given how stacked this lobby is. Um, looks like one of First Killer Daniels. Well, we're either going to have both of them on 2 or First Killer on 1 out of 5. This is a disaster for First Killer in this game. Uh, not because he's got Chronic as his teammate. Chronic's actually doing really well, in fact, for our sequel at the moment. But because he's up against arguably the best 2v2 combination in North America, Daniel and Beast Mode. These guys have won, I think, every, or at least every recent 2v2 tournament in North America that they've played together, um, beating the likes of Chronic and First Killer along the way, if I'm not mistaken. Now they're going to be teaming up for the first time today to try and uh, put Beast Mode into first place. Get Daniel into second equal. Really, you know, give First Killer a nightmare because he's, he's he's on one win out of three right now. It could be one out of four unless he can, with the help of Chronic, take down the number one team in the minds of most of you guys watching, and me as well. 
Yeah, Chronic and LJ are the, the number two team that we expect to do quite well. But didn't Chronic and LJ lose earlier? Yeah, Chronic and LJ lost their first game. Um, this is Daniel and Beast Mode's first game together. Chronic and uh, Daniel are actually the, the king um, combination so far. They've won both of the games that they've played together, beating Beast Mode LJ and First Killer LJ. So yeah, Chronic Daniel might be he might be able to go 3-0. It's a great vines for Beast Mode to start something. He's not able to get much height in the air dribble though. You can see the Beast Mode's just always trying to be ready for anything that comes towards his team's net. He's rarely all in, if ever all in. Um, you know, even now when he's pre-jumping to the ceiling, look, he's got a recovery plan so that he can get back into the play. And that recovery plan involved ceiling reset, landing on the sidewall, using what boost he had left to get back. It's so important to do this, especially in 2v2. Don't use all your boost for something that might not work. Of course, if you've got an open net or you've got a chance on net and you're losing late in a game, yeah, you can use all your boost um, to go and try and make that happen. But yeah, Beast Mode is always just trying to keep his, his boost nice and high. And he always has a recovery plan. Fake challenge there on the wall. Bring Daniel into the play. Big space in between Beast Mode and Daniel here. Daniel, yeah, he will cut. So Daniel turned there, noticed that Beast Mode was all the way back and that's why he breaks rotation. If Beast Mode is closer, Daniel would have rotated in behind him. But instead, Beast Mode just waits, lets Daniel cut in front of him, um, surprises the dribbling opponent with the challenge, and immediately scores. That's something else you guys absolutely want to try in your own games in 2v2. Uh, when you're rotating away, don't go back post, go straight back towards the ball and challenge from an awkward angle that the uh, attacker won't see coming. And First Killer equalizes immediately. Beast Mode trying to predict where he's going with this. First Killer managed to find a way through. Great shot, honestly. That's a difficult one to stop. Nick Leon, 2 3 2 1, thanks to the Prime. Okay, Ice, thanks for the 60 month year one. He says, Have you added a WAS versus N rematch yet? The answer is no. Um, now, that might not happen soon because at the moment there's a really big LAN in Saudi Arabia that all of the top Saudi Arabian teams are playing in. Um, and that's, I think, what Rawas is dedicating his full focus to since they're not making it to, you know, since they didn't qualify for either of the international majors so far this season. They really want to do well. Oh, that's a gorgeous shot. What a pass from Daniel to Beast Mode. Um, what's the land called? It's not Gamers 8, it's another, it's another one. What's it called again? Somebody in chat must know. But yeah, there's a big land in Saudi. I think the prize pool is six figures. Saudi E-League, I think it might be. Something similar, like something like that. Um, so yeah, I think Rawas might be just dedicating his full focus to that tournament. It's, it's a tournament that goes on until the end of March, so... Possibly April will get a, a Zen Rawas rematch. Um, I mean, until then, who, is there anyone else that you guys want to see Zen rematch? He's kind of beaten everybody in the top 10 apart from uh, Rawas. All the other active players, at least. First Killer's told me that he's kind of um, not playing ones at the moment. That, of course, means that Zen's beaten Daniel, um, Chronic, the, and AJ, the other three top players in in the US. Daniel. Yeah, I think Daniel's the guy who probably deserves... I think the three players who deserve a rematch with Zen the most are probably Daniel, um, Vatira, because they both took him to Game 7, and uh, probably Moxie, to be honest, because, yeah, Mo Moxie's... He's been grinding. Um, he's been putting in work. Yeah, Jorias gave him a great, a great game as well. Uh, yeah, that's another good shout. He took him to game five. I know Jorius was Jorius was actually the closest to beating him. Zen had to equalize with four seconds left in game three to avoid being swept. So Jorius is def definitely the closest to beating him. Um, it, yeah, he added him to the list for sure. Toxic as well, another great match for him. You know, there's there's lots of players who were very close to Zen. Um, I, I know Zen just wants to rematch Ruas, but Ruas is busy at the moment, so we might have to try and um, give him some other targets to feast on until April when, uh, well, it's not actually too long um, until April's upon us. I think that's when Ruas is going to be available um, to rematch him just, a, just over a couple of weeks from now. Has Zen been working on his kickoffs? Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's shown better kickoffs in his more recent show matches. 
So I would say yes, he has. Uh, you know, the, the early matches, he didn't have a second kickoff to go to, but now he's got several um, that he's quite comfortable with. Still a long way to go, though, in my opinion. Still a long way to go for Zen and Batira, the new guys in ones, but okay. Let's uh, update the scores here before I forget to beast mode. Four. Uh, Daniel going to join Chronic on three. Got a bit of a three-horse race at the moment uh, with First Killer and LJ just uh, lagging a bit behind. Um, but LJ is going to be joining back in here to play um, alongside Daniel against Beast Mode and Chronic. Okay, this game we're going we're gonna to spectate LJ for the whole game. Let's see what LJ's getting up to. He's fresh off his break. We're gonna every player in the next this game and the next three that comes fresh off a break, we're gonna spectate them for the whole game. Try and get inside their heads a little bit, see what they're doing differently from the others in the lobby. Now beast mode in the last game, yeah, he never out of the play, ever. Every single moment of the game he was in the play. Whenever he's first man, he's thinking about how do I go for the ball, maybe win it, definitely pressure it, and definitely uh, with a capital D recover and uh, get ready to make another play. Yeah, LJ's not in this play. Already we're seeing more aggression from LJ. Leaves his teammate, of course his teammate Daniel, so he's quite happy to leave him solo for a bit. Um, but he leaves his teammate Daniel to go and uh, hunt for a demo. That's, you know, a little bit more rolling the dice from LJ. Something we didn't see a lot from Beast Mode, if at all from Beast Mode, was rolling the dice, just leaving his teammate in a 1v1. Um, but what LJ's doing there is he's going for a demo, knowing that if he lands it, and his teammate does 1v1 the other player, it might just be an open net. So, you know, it, it's yes, it's a gamble, but there's a massive upside to the risk that's being taken. A great save by LJ. Ran out of boost again. His boost management has not been, I think, as good as uh, some of the other players in the lobby, but definitely beast mode. I mean, again, got to compare him to beast mode who we just watched for a whole game. Never out of the game, never out of boost, and LJ has been in front of the ball a lot more. Probably in the first minute of this game, he's been in front of the ball a similar amount to beast mode for an entire five minutes. Beast mode always behind the ball, it would seem. It's one of the things that, you know, if you're if you're solo queuing twos, I'm sure you can all relate to. When you've got a teammate who you just always know is going to be there whenever you um, whenever you go for a big play. Love that fake challenge from LJ. Faked uh, aerial challenge, flew onto the back wall, and then got a real challenge in. Very creative. Yeah, isn't it nice when you've got a 2 teammate that you just feel like you can trust? There's nothing worse than feeling like you've been scored on as soon as you're out of the game for 0 0.1 seconds. You leave your teammate alone in defense for you know a split second and you just feel like they're going to concede. If there's a way to concede, they're going to make it happen. <laughs> we can all, uh, I'm sure, relate to that uh, when we're solo queuing. LJ clearly has a ton of faith in Daniel. He is happy to leave Daniel alone at the back. Unfortunately for um, Daniel, he's left LJ here, tries to double the ball off the sidewall. Instead, he just got one touch, and that left LJ in a horrible position, and they have been scored on. So the SSG combination, down by one. Beast Mode and Chronic looking to get um, an even larger lead on LJ and First Killer, and Daniel as well. Yeah, that, it, you know, it looks like LJ in that play, um, he definitely did, he made mistakes in the run-up to it. He was, out, he was out of boost. You never have to be out. You never, you know, if you're out of boost in two, sometimes it happens. Didn't look like he needed to be out of boost there, though, when he struggled to make that save. Um, but yeah, Daniel kind of put him in trouble as well by missing his double tap off the sidewall. So it's a bit of a team misplay there. I'll leave them down by one. Oh my goodness, what a save by Beast Mode. Well, we're going to get to watch it again. I don't know how Beast Mode's managed to roll that ball wider than that, but LJ did enough to not get into the post. Look at this from Beast Mode. He just half flipped with the ball to save LJ's shot. And uh, luckily for LJ, Daniel was there to help him out. Beast Mode was not going to make that easy. Beast Mode wins the kickoff against Chronic, who takes one touch, flicks it just over LJ. Beast Mode's bumped Daniel as well. Beast Mode missed... No, Chronic's bumped uh, Daniel, I mean to say. Beast Mode missed the double. Right, Daniel going to try and punish him. Looks like Chronic was able to dodge the um, air dribble bump, if that's what Daniel was going for. LJ up early on the recovery. He's got Daniel in net behind him, so he jumps to force beast mode to make a play before it's too late for Daniel to read what's coming towards him. LJ with great vision. Comes back into the play. Wants to air dribble the ball middle. He had the option of booming that, but takes control. 
Um, actually, Beast Mode is four out of five so far. He's only played five times. We're on game seven, um, but Beast Mode wasn't playing in one of those games uh, before this, so he's actually four out of five. Beast Mode, 80% win rate so far. Really dominating the early games here. Now remember, they're going to play 12 total. Beast Mode is already just one game win away from the end scores, the final scores that Alpha 54 and uh, Exotic were able to get in Europe when we did this for uh, France. They finished off with 5 out of 12. Beast Mode's already on 4 out of 5. Oh, what a pass by Daniel. LJ it's not quite sniped it. Oh my goodness. He was so close. But he's hit both posts. Can he redeem himself? Yes, he can. LJ doesn't want to be last in the lobby anymore. Beautiful solo play. Chronic had beast mode um, going to the ball. That's why he didn't jump there. Beast mode was making a challenge from behind, but looked like LJ was just too quick. Got away from him. Hits the back of the net. Daniel and LJ, they both have boost. They're both in defense. Great position for them to be in. Chronic trying to cause some chaos. Daniel's all over it. LJ's just got to be careful here not to overextend. They don't need another goal. They're quite comfortable defending against uh, Chronic and Beast Mode, at least for most of this game. This is uh, looking great for them, looking great for the current Space Station Gaming combination. Might even be three. No, it's going to be another post for LJ, in fact. Misses his bump on Chronic, but surely Daniel can grind it. Indeed he can. That gives Daniel um, first equal. They're going to be four out of six himself and um, Beast Mode now. Four wins out of six games each. Okay, game eight coming up. Let's see who we've got this time. It's Beast Mode and LJ. LJ just getting his second win of the day there. Let's see if he can keep up the momentum. Daniel sitting out. First killer coming back in. And you know what that means. We're going to be on first killer POV for this game. Can I start by highest? Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, no. <laughs> I'll have to just keep changing it if I do that. Let's just leave it. It's only five numbers. It's not that hard to understand. Uh, where's first killer? I'm trying to find him. There he is. I swear first killer started in the octane today, didn't he? I swear he started in the octane. Now he's in the, the Fennec. Yeah, so he's trying to get a little bit of a switch up here. This is something Monkey Moon did in Europe as well. He started in the Octane, switched to the Fennec for the end when it started to go all wrong for him, then back in the Octane for the tiebreaker. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in the Octane earlier. Now he's the Fennec. He's way out of the game here, though. He's left Chronic completely alone. Luckily for First Killer, Chronic has done very well. No, I think he accidentally pinged that um, the entire length of the pitch. Wait a minute, it's going to work, though. He's beast mode. And LJ have failed to take the free ball. Now, double demo. It's a brief 1v1 here, which Beast Mode has won. First killer knew that he had time on the respawn to grab the boost. Of course, sticking a challenge in. What challenge it is? Put LJ way out of position. That's a very speculative jump by First killer. I mean, it, it works out for Chronic. Did First killer try and scare LJ here? I mean, he jumped way later than LJ. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not sure what First Killer is going for there, I'll be completely honest. It didn't look like it made LJ panic. I think LJ just straight up missed it, the double. He tried to double it sideways, hit it into the ceiling. Um, so definitely a misplay from LJ there. Yeah, First Killer jumping. Also, not really something that made a lot of sense. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. The only thing I can think of is he's trying to make LJ panic. Um, but playing the miss there seems like a very low percentage play. I don't think LJ's missing the ball completely, like ever, um, in that position. Have to think he's hitting it. I think you've got to respect him hitting it. But yeah, he, had a, he didn't have a lot of boost, that's why. <laughs> that's a bit, a bit of a crazy play there. First killer defending the air double bump by bumping Beast Mode into a save. I think Chronic uh, dove too high for the saving the shot. Um, we didn't just have first killer Chronic we, uh, last game. We had it two games ago. There is, well, there will be a couple of times throughout this, uh, these games where you'll see the same teammates playing, um, you know, in two games that are separated by one other one. You'll just never see the same 
teammates playing twice, like two consecutive games. They will be at least separated by one other game. Chronic is scuffed today. What do you mean? Yeah, I think he's on three wins out of five, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think Chronic's already... No, he's on, he's on three wins out of seven, sorry. No, it's three out of six, three out of six. He's 50% win. That's pretty good in a lobby like this. Oh, Beast Mode is just... Boomed in a long shot. First Killer and Chronic very disconnected in this game, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. They're not really on the same page with a lot of what they're doing. When Chronic's forward, First Killer's grabbing back corner boost when Chronic wants to go up. Sometimes First Killer's, you know, jumping at the same time. Um, it's this, like, polar opposite of someone like Monkey Moon that we saw in the France 2v2 the other day, where he was always close-ish to his teammate. Um, Regardless of what boost he's on, he would just stick around in the play a lot of the time. If his teammate's making a play on the ball, that is. Or about to make a challenge. That's a really good 50 there by First Killer. They'll bring in Chronic into the action. Fakes the challenge there. Doesn't have a lot of boost. Let's Chronic make a challenge sideways. Another fake challenge from First Killer. Seeing that Chronic wasn't ready to follow up immediately, so he just delays. This is much better now. So they're starting to get... A bit more synergy with their plays. First killer wants to snipe LJ on the back wall here. LJ far enough away from him that he decided not a good idea. And great shot from LJ on the counter attack. They go up by three goals to one. First killer underestimating just how good that counter attack was going to be from LJ. Beast mode POV. We did beast mode POV two games ago. We're going to be on first killer POV this game. Then we're going to be on uh, Daniel POV and then Chronic POV. Then we're going to go back to standard spectating for the final five games of the lobby. Our skillers' fake challenges have been very successful here, but unfortunately they've not really been able to follow them up with big pressure plays. This is huge though. First killer, full faith in Chronic to slot the shot. Just lunges far forward to threaten the goalkeeper. And that's something that LJ would have had to pay attention to. He jumped... Um, to dodge first killer's demo and that made it impossible for him to reach the bottom corner shot great synergy by first and chronic who i think started off this game a little bit uh disconnected but they're starting to come together here at the business end dusty boy thanks to the prime also voidy thanks to the seven month tier one is there a prize pool for this not currently i mean uh all donations for to my stream go to prize pools but no no prize pool for this currently um, Cat Main Dan, thanks to the Prime. Also, Cam Cam in it fam, thanks to the Prime. Firstly, really calling the the bluffs there. Beast mode faking multiple times. Firstly, he's not having it. He's a difficult player to fake. Firstly, always finds good challenging angles. Goal side. Wanted to demo LJ there. Even now he's just. Parking underneath LJ, that's hopefully to give Chronic a better save angle. But Chronic was backwards the whole time, so he couldn't really make a play on the ball while First Killer's messing with LJ. Chronic was facing away from the play. And that while First Killer's tripping up LJ, Chronic couldn't do anything about it, he couldn't follow up. Why do I believe these different styles evolve uh, per region? Well, I've talked about this um, in the past. It's, it's my same theory for... 3v3, same theory for 1v1, 2v2. In my opinion, the styles that regions play are most influenced by the best players in that region. And it just so happens that the best players in um, the very early days of North American Rocket League you know, played one way, and then the best players in the EU played a whole other way. And the, the whole regions copied the best teams within their own region. Um, now, that was way back at the start of Rocket League. I know a lot of you guys didn't watch Rocket League esports back then. But um, we got to see kind of a second iteration of that. We got to see that happen again um, when the pandemic happened. When the pandemic happened, it kind of forced NA, EU, MENA. Well, maybe not MENA because they play EU servers. But yeah, forced NA, EU, South America, OCE, all these regions just kind of went their own separate ways for a while. New players rose to the top of the rankings. 
in those regions and everybody copied those players. They weren't copying players who were playing at international events, they're copying players who are beating them in ranked, who are beating them in scrims, who are beating them in regional tournaments. So the, 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 the reason that I think you get play styles that look very different, especially right after the pandemic, the two regions played, EU and NA played super differently, um, was because, yeah, everyone in NA is copying NRG, everyone in EU is copying BDS. That's, uh, we're, we're on Daniel POV for this game, by the way, game nine. That's my theory. And yeah, the same, same is true for 2v2. Everybody just copies the guy who's winning ranked. Everybody just copies the, the players who are winning ranked. Wait, I've gone off Daniel POV immediately, so let me go back on. I forgot. I just started pressing buttons. Yeah, it's not to, to say, you know, blame NRG for uh, NA leaving the ball to go get boost. I mean, a lot of, there was a lot of other, like, great players in North America who did that. Um, you know, I think one player who is quite influential in the run up to um, or to, you know season 9 uh, season X another player who is very influential is Sypical and he's got a very defensive high boost you know kind of play style as well uh, Miss very defensive high boost play style just keeping boost and uh, playing really far back so you know it's not just energy a lot of the other best players in NA kind of did this as well first killer is doing it and a lot of these two well, a lot of the 2v2 plays that we just saw i think does it uh, less so these days in threes but yeah coming again coming out of the pandemic you saw tons of that uh the best players in NA would leave the play to go get boost and we're seeing daniel do it here just as another example of it um but you know sometimes it's good to do that daniel correctly identified that he could leave the play get boost and then make it back to the play before anything's really happened so now he's just back in the play with more boost than he had um so yeah some in some situations it is the right play if you'd stuck around in the play with small pads you'd maybe just have less boost and you'd have waited around doing nothing the whole time all about being able to read when you can leave the play and when you can't when it's probably better to stick around because something's about to happen a 50 50 is about to break the ball free into a position you can um, you can make a play on. That's just my theory. That's just my theory, personally. Yeah, I'm actually I'm quite surprised we've not seen more back left, back right kickoffs. When I saw that these guys were in uh, comms, or likely in comms, at the start of this, uh, Beast Mode Daniel and uh, First Killer, at least. Oh, dear. Well, that's not the synergy Beast Mode and Daniel have dominated 2v2 tournaments with. That was a different kind of top <laughs> synergy. Not the right kind. LJ immediately capitalized on it and uh, puts himself and first killer in front. Is this the first killer regain, perhaps? Yeah, what do you guys reckon? Uh, would, you, would you think I'm onto something? One in chat, if you think I'm onto something with the play styles, I think it's pretty simple. People just copy the players and the teams who are winning. Um, oh, huge fake from Daniel. He didn't have much boost, so that was the best play you could go for. I think you're you're much more likely to be able to see the playstyle differences in 2v2 um, than you are in 3v3 because I think a lot of viewers when they watch 3v3 they watch it with a ton of bias um, and it's hard for them to you know I, it's, it's hard for people to analyze 3v3 without being massively biased about their perception of the game perception of the teams um, even the players themselves I think can be hugely biased about the effectiveness of their own teams within their own region. Uh, pro players, that is. Great shot by Beast Mode. Daniel doing enough to open up some space for him here. Beast Mode just capitalized on LJ, taking a bit too long to get back to the ball. Stop skipping replays? No. <laughs> I'm going to keep skipping some replays. If, there's, if it's a standard goal, we're probably skipping it, because this is a two-hour two hour lobby, and we don't want to make it two hours, ten minutes if we watch every replay. Yeah, like I said at the start, I mean, uh, even there's probably some people tuned in now who weren't here for the very start of this. At the very start, I said you're likely to see a very different style of play um, in these games compared to the, the French 2v2 games we saw the other day. And that's not to say that one play style is better than the other. It's just differences in styles. Um, interesting comparison. Type 1 in chat if you were here to watch Vatira versus Daniel 1v1 the other day. I think it's a very interesting play style comparison that you'll know about if you watch Vatira versus Daniel. Now Vatira said in my chat after losing to Daniel, I asked him why do you always turn 
regardless of what your boost is, why do you always turn to challenge on low boost? And he said it's because he's scared to go for boost and then have to defend um, a shot. He'd rather just go challenge immediately because then he doesn't have to defend a shot from a player who's coming at him. He just goes at the player and kind of takes control of the situation. Um, but you know, that same kind of fear manifests itself in a different way with players who prefer to go to grab the boost. They're thinking, well, I don't want to be on zero boost when the ball comes at me, so I'm going to go get a boost. And I think that's something that most Rock League players can relate to. They would prefer to have boost when they have to make a play, so they go get it. Because it's scary to think about having to make a play with no boost. But yeah, some players, they don't really have that same thought. They, they, they're more scared of leaving the ball than they are of not having boost. So it's, it's just a preference thing. Um, Daniel was able to beat Vatira, who was doing that. Yeah, Daniel played a much more boost-centric style than a Vatira's heavy ball pressure style. It, you know, it doesn't. It's one of the not necessarily one is better than the other. It's just preferences. And it's really cool, in my opinion, to see those differences in playstyles. Ooh, uh, LJ and First Killer are having a great game here. We're uh, it seemed like we were on the POV curse, didn't we? Curse. Yeah, we cursed uh, um, First Killer with the POV and they would curse Daniel with the POV as well even though he's got beast mode in his team beast mode Daniel are they really going to take an L here you got to think surely not has Daniel got it in him to solo play first killer and LJ first killer again so hard to mind game just plays the ball from a safe angle very difficult to get the ball past him like this you, you kind of if you're going to go past first killer you kind of have to outplay him you're not going to get a free um, pass by just faking him Daniel leaves it middle for beast mode Trying to get the ball behind LJ there. No such luck, LJ. Positions brilliantly, and look at the regain for LJ, by the way. He was down on one point, um, I think three games ago. And now with three straight wins, he's on four. Um, and first killer is going to be getting a bit closer to the pack as well. He's on two. And Chronic, who started off first equal, he's coming back in now to see if he can stop the regain that's currently occurring. This will be the last solo POV um, game we're going to look at here. Uh, Chronic and first. We're going to go on Chronic POV for this and see what Chronic's getting up to. I mean, so far, I think LJ has been the most aggressive player. I don't know if you guys would agree with that. I think, for me, LJ's been the most aggressive player um, in the lobby. He's the guy who's just sending it with low boost a lot. Um, Beast Mode and uh, Daniel comparatively quite defensive for a skiller. A little bit in between, I think, maybe 50-50. I think LJ most aggressive, first skiller second most aggressive. And then Beast Mode and Daniel, the more defensive players. I'd rather have someone in front of them while they're playing. A Chronic and Daniel are uh, actually the, the combination with the best record so far. So are Beast Mode and LJ. Beast Mode and LJ, Chronic and Daniel. They've won both of the games that they've played as teammates. Now we've got um, Chronic First Killer. This is a combination that is yet to win a game. We've also got Daniel Beast Mode. Or, uh, sorry, Daniel and LJ who have won one game. So Daniel and LJ, the Space Station Gaming combination. Probably the favorites here against uh, Chronic and First Killer. We actually watched Chronic and First Killer from First Killer's POV. And uh, they started off a bit awkward together. Kind of grew into the match as it went on, but there was too much work to do. Let's see if they can synergize more in this second game. Well, they don't even need to in the opening few seconds. Just a free shot for first killer. Yeah, LJ back pass to Daniel. Daniel wanted to drive down the wall there and then half volley the ball. Full length of the pitch. First killer saw what he was doing and just beat him to it. Oh, key touch there by Chronic. Great reflex. LJ was about to be through on goal. First killing Chronic, similar idea of what to do there. Chronic bails. Trying to buy time for First Killer to get back here. He's done well, my goodness. Oh, First Killer couldn't get there though. Chronic's done very well. Okay, says First Killer. Well, let's go in First Killer POV for a second here and see what happens. Sorry, First Killer, but we have to know. Oh, he just beamed it. He just, yeah, he just speed flipped. <laughs> he thought he needed to hurry, but he actually had so much time. He just didn't know how much time he had. He assumed that it was going to be an immediate follow up goal. Or follow-up shot from uh, Daniel and LJ. Uh, yeah, Daniel and LJ were just stuck in the mud. There was no way they were going to get back to the ball. Okay, back in Chronic Pov. Keeps the ball near post. Does not want to censor it. Back past Daniel to LJ. 
Actually just booms it along. Rascal and uh, Chronic, I, I don't think they're in comms based on that one play we just saw there, because that was a big hesitation from both players. If they're in comms, somebody's saying, I've got it in that situation. The other one would not jump. Um, that wasn't a you know, double commit. Some double commits happen even in comms, and it's a panic scenario, and two players are coming at the ball from different angles, trying to block different shots that are happening at the same time. Um, that wasn't one of them. That, that was probably a no comms play, if I were to guess. To ask at the end, to remind me to ask chat who's been using comms, if anyone. So, you know, some of, some of these players prefer to just in these situations, these ranked um, sort of games where it's just mix up um, twos, different teammates, different opponents every game. They prefer to just do it with no comms, music, just vibing, just trying to get in the zone. Chronic definitely in his zone right now. Perfect control. Look how little boost he had, but he was able to keep control of the ball the entire way. Maybe about to break the POV curse. Um, get another point on the board for himself and first color. This is going to be very close, by the way. If you guys look at the score in the left of your screen for a second. We went into uh, these POV games with Beast Mode way in front. Since then, we've actually seen a resurgence of first skiller and LJ, players who are trailing with only one game win between, or two between them, a <laughs> double reset, Daniel. You gotta give him that much time on the ball. I mean, the first challenge here from Chronic, what he's trying to do is get Daniel to lose control. Did he do it? No, because Daniel's Daniel and he just scored an absolute world. He will have to save the replay on that. That's unreal. Look at the angle change he was able to get on that first reset as well. First skiller was no doubt queuing up behind Chronic to jump as soon as Chronic forces Daniel to make a play. Daniel just went around him and <laughs> put First Killer on the back foot. Kind of similar to what Atto did the other day to Zen um, in the 1v1 they played against each other. Yeah, I'll see a lot of you guys in chat also noticing the similarity. Oh, First Killer and uh, Chronic both getting in each other's way a little bit there. Chronic's left the mid boost just in case First Killer needs it on the exit. He's noticed that First Killer's probably going to be on low boost there, and there is First Killer picking up that mid boost. It's not the first time today that Chronic's left a big boost somewhere for a teammate to go back and get. Love that from a 2 teammate. Chronic going to try and get back to the play before he's needed to run in the whole pitch to get 100 boost. That uh, does give Daniel time to get behind the ball. Chronic ball chasing on the recovery as First Killer wants him to. First Killer's hoping that entire time that Chronic ball chases and puts some pressure on LJ. That way he doesn't have to defend a solo play. Oh, beautiful synergy. Well, they're coming together well. Definitely one of the combos that struggled in the very first few minutes of playing together, but they've just gotten better and better with every minute that's passed. They're taking down an already successful combination of players. Yeah, I've... Uh, Click to save the replay here. If you guys remind me, I can watch that from Daniel's POV later. I wanted to talk about Chronic POV uh, on the first replay through. Because that's what we're doing in this game. I accidentally clicked off him again. I'm so bad for this. I keep clicking off the POV that we're supposed to be on. Right, Chronic and Farskiller are in a horrendous spot here. Their boost is running low. Farskiller's managed to get a soft clear towards LJ. That's going to be too... Space Station Gaming players in the play. LJ trying to take a leap out of Daniel's playbook with the reset change on the flip reset. The angle change, I meant to say. Chronic's got first killer as an option. Decides to just backboard the ball instead. Chronic in that situation knows that an infield pass could be risky. Instead just fires it long. It's a great read from Chronic here, though. Confirms the win. And we have got an incredibly close score tally. Um, now, what are we? We're 10 games in, so we've got five more games. Look at the scores. How has this happened? Right, we got Beast Mode first against Chronic and Daniel. Ooh, this is a very interesting match. Chronic and Daniel are currently 2-0. This is their third and last uh, game that they're going to play as teammates in this lobby. Well, let's see if they can win it together and get the perfect 3-0 score. The only combination that was able to do that in the France uh, mix-up 2 session the other day was Zen and Vatira. They went 3-0.
And the only combination in the, in the France Mix-Up 2's session that didn't get a win at all is actually Exotic and Vatira, the two teammates. They, they lost three times. So this is a, one of the combinations in NA that has a chance to go perfect. Daniel and Chronic. Nobody really talking about this combination coming in today. A lot of talk about Beast Mode Dan. A lot of talk from the, those in the know about LJ Chronic. Honestly, a lot of talk about any combination of Beast Mode Daniel first killer. <laughs> Daniel's just scored a beautiful Dandroid goal. Love, love me some Dandroid. Sits on the ball <laughs> and forces it in. Yeah, sorry, the bracket command is not uh, real. I don't know if there is a bracket for this. Uh, if there is a like video page. Which NA2's player would you say slots into teams the most like Monkey Moon? Um, I said Beast Mode was going to be the easiest to play with. That was my prediction to win this. I think I predicted Beast Mode to win when he was first equal earlier on like two wins. Now he's on five. Um, but I don't think any of these guys play anything like Monkey Moon in twos, to be honest. I don't think any of the players in this lobby play at all like Monkey Moon. Um, Monkey Moon is very much about, you know, staying close to the play at all times, regardless of his boost. And, you know, trying to win little engagements with, you know, small touches, 50-50s. Um, Makes like he's, he's a horrible player to play against and a great player to play with. I, I, th I think everyone in this lobby is more NA style. Go get 100 boost. Um, often. You'll, you'll almost never see Monkey Moon doing that when his teammates got the ball. He'll almost never go for the 100 boost. He'll always follow them. So I don't think any of these guys play like Monkey Moon. But, you know, some of these guys are incredibly effective. Great at noticing moments where they can leave the play and make it back. Great shot there by Chronic. Beast Mode with no boost. Just worried about the high shot. Chronic just shoots it low. Something I've heard uh, Chronic and apparently Jack talking about is that they, they like to just shoot the ball low a lot of the time because so many players pre-jump. So many players are scared of the high shot that actually just shooting it low is a good idea these days in the pre-jump meta. Daniel noticed Chronic wasn't really going anywhere with that play. Just comes in to help him out. This one of First Killer getting very close to each other but First Killer takes charge. That looked like a comms play to me. I don't know about you guys, but that looked like they were in comms because Beast Mode was right next to the ball, right next to Vars Killer, and he knew what was happening. So I think these guys might be in comms. Oh, that's just in. <laughs> what a dunk by Daniel. Chronic and Daniel, what a combination. Are they about to go perfect? Like They've already beaten Vars uh, Killer LJ. They've already beaten Beast Mode LJ. And now they're looking to take down... Beast Mode first killer, probably the trickiest combination in the minds the most. Oh, what a pass so Well, first killer, Beast Mode not done yet. Absolute banger of a pass from first killer. Beast Mode, subtle air roll into the ball to make sure that there's no chance Daniel's making it back to save it. Sam Stewart 69, thanks for the five month prime, by the way. Really appreciate the sub, the resub, I should say. Oh, they've conceded another kickoff though. Well, what went wrong here? What did. What did Beast Mode try to do? Let's see. That's a very weird kickoff. I, I I said that I thought they were in comms earlier. Now I'm not so sure because Beast Mode just killed the ball dead on the kickoff and first kill is waiting in net. Maybe he's just they've lost so many kickoffs, he's playing more defensively, but I, mean, I don't think that even works really. Waiting in net against a team who are killing the ball repeatedly against you is not the play. Then you just have a you have a, you have a free shot um, against you. The play would, if they if they're really trying to do that, the play from Beast Mode would be not to kill the ball dead on the kickoff. You should probably try and get it into a back corner if they're going to go down that route. Yeah, like I said during the France match, um, I've been far more impressed with the KSA players' kickoffs than the French players' kickoffs or the USA players' kickoffs. I think these guys are very one-dimensional compared to the KSA players who were. A lot more tricky and difficult to play against uh, with their kick plethora of kickoff strategies. Daniel going to just run in front of the ball here. Has the redirect if needed. Beast Mode has to be worried about two things here. We'll watch Beast Mode's POV on this. Because while Daniel's 
in the area. He's actually in front of the ball. Makes it look like he's going to bump Beast Mode. So Beast Mode doesn't go for the ball. Um, but then Daniel actually does get a redirect on the ball. While faking a bump. That's incredible. Incredibly high play, high level play there from Daniel. Chronica and Daniel are utterly dominating here. They, they've been easily, for me, the, the best combination of players today. What a save by Chronic as well. And his individual brilliance from them, but they're also synergizing incredibly well. Yeah, uh, I didn't work out the duo, uh, the the records live for the France match, but somebody posted it on the Reddit. Matira Zen had the best record. Matira Exotic had the worst record overall. Whoops, that's not the button I meant to press. Um, <laughs> but our scholar and Beast Mode do still have time here. Beast Mode getting a bit of revenge on Daniel now with the bump at the other end of the field. Thought it was one pov. We, we just did one pov from games 6 through 10. Um, with the 5 at the start and the 5 at the end of today's matches uh, being multi-POV. So, you know, if you guys want to take another closer look at any individual player, you can go back and watch that game from them. Um, if you want to play like them, you can you know, watch the game that I have of them. Obviously, one game is not enough to completely download a playstyle, but I think you'll get the idea. It's also just, uh, for me, I think, for me, uh, watching these games, it's helpful doing that just to see what exactly these players are thinking, because you never really know what a player's thinking until you go in their, their own individual POV, and then you can see, ah, okay, he went for the ball because of this, or he didn't go for the ball because of that. Um, or oh, he thought this was going to happen, so maybe something looked silly, but really, from his POV, it was quite understandable. You know, you need to try and get inside the mind of the pro if you're really going to appreciate what they're doing. Um, it's very easy to, especially if you... I'll show you another silly POV. This, If we look at it, the game from this angle, which a lot of the time does happen, you know, this director camera, wide angle, it's very hard to tell what the players are trying to do in any situation, because... Like Daniel right now, Daniel's just stuck on the backward, I wonder what he's doing, but really if you're on Daniel's POV you'd see why he's there. Oh, he's actually reading the shot the entire time, and all of these micro-adjustments are because of the play that's coming towards him. Oh, because of that player moving around in front of him. I think you can only really appreciate High Level Rock League in player POV. Hunt's Barry D, thanks to the Prime, welcome back, uh, welcome to the channel I should say. We're gonna get a, another win for Chronic and Daniel, momentarily. That puts them on a perfect 3-0 score together. Phenomenal stuff. I don't think anybody coming into today had Chronic Daniel as a winning combination on their uh, own scorecard. Look at this, though. We've actually got 5-5-5. Five, five, five. And then 3-4. Uh, LJ, first killer. Two players. We've got some work to do. First killer is going to be sitting out of the next game before joining in for the last three matches in a row. Um, LJ's getting back in now. We'll see if he can get the upset win on Beast Mode Daniel with his all-time favorite 2v2 tournament combination, Chronic. This is going to be a banger. This is this is the match everybody wanted to see at the start of the day. We've got Beast Mode Daniel against Chronic LJ. I think Beast Mode Daniel have beaten them twice in two different tournaments. But Beast Mode Daniel did lose earlier on today, I believe, as well, didn't they? Yeah, they lost to First Killer LJ, so... They haven't been the the best combination today. And they won't be, regardless of the outcome of this uh, game, either. I'm most curious to see what LJ is going to do after his one-game break here. He's just sitting back playing Chronic Challenge for him. Oh, it's a nightmare scenario for LJ. He's done very well there. Chronic did not force really anything much to happen with his first challenge. Not that he could. Beast Mode Daniel made it so difficult for them. But don't forget, you know, LJ coming back in. Now to play four games in a row and finish off. Um, hopefully for him as strong as he can. He's trying to help Chronic go universal number one. If Chronic can win this, he is top of the leaderboard. And uh, that would make him the favorite to just win the whole thing. It'd be very surprising. I don't think many people expected Chronic to be the guy at the end of all this. I think if Beast Mode Daniel or First Killer won this, no one would bat an eyelid, but Chronic and LJ coming in as slight underdogs, I feel. They're showing that they absolutely do belong at this level. Shows you how close 
all the players are at this level as well, just like in the French matchup. Although someone can start off poorly, they've got the ability to regain, they've got the ability to come back. And on beast mode, looking for an opening. It's been difficult to find. Chronic intercepting on the backboard there before getting the counter attack started. Am I doing a Canada one left here? I don't know who the, like, I was actually saying to my chat earlier, I don't know who the five best Canadian 2v2 players are right now. Um, because a lot of the Canadian players in RLCS, like, I don't know if they even play twos. Um, a lot. So, probably the five best 2v2 players in Canada are ranked grinders, not RLCS players. Or maybe a combination of both. I really don't know. I don't know. I'd have to do some research, research for that one. Canada's one of the more difficult, um, difficult ones to just throw together quickly. Other lists I find very easy to, you know, get five names that I just know are absolutely top tier because of ranked and uh, RLCS were England, Spain, Germany, Netherlands. These were all very simple. Brazil. Very clear who the, you know, maybe not who the absolute five best are, but very clear who five world-class players are. Um, we'll double reset from Chronic here. Daniel. Deals with it with a defensive reset of his own. Both teams are just trading flip resets at this point. LJ lets Chronic come into the play. Chronic's actually landed very poorly here. This is going to be defensive work required from LJ. Heavy touch from Daniel makes it easy for him. The demo does not, though. Chronic closes the distance. Great challenge by Chronic. Beast mode and Daniel are piling on the pressure here. They want to go joint first. And actually, it would be... Um, completely le uh, level between the two. They both have one uh, game that they're going to sit out after this one is done. Oh, what a cut. LJ completely reads the back pass. And it might be the upset win. It might be Chronic number one. Beast Mode tries to back pass to Daniel. LJ completely reads it. Very impressive stuff. Getting a bit of revenge on Beast Mode Daniel for all the tournaments they've lost against them. I think they've lost two tournaments against him. They make it sound of it as if it's even worse than that. Chronic passing back to LJ there. He knew his shot was likely to be intercepted, so they're just wasting some time playing keep away. Not able to keep the ball away from Beast Mode Daniel for too long. That's Daniel to Beast Mode, very high pass. Looks like Beast Mode was expecting it to be a bit lower. And here comes LJ the other way. He's actually got the ball past Daniel. It's going to be 2-0. see Daniel's POV on this one. Yeah, he tried to jump upside down and then catch the ball on the goal line. Couldn't keep it out. What he sealed. Thanks for 22 month frame, by the way. Welcome back to the channel. At this rate, we are about to have a three-way tie for second place. And Chronic in the lead. Chronic's pre-jumped LJ here. LJ's going to follow up as well. They're feeling confident. Well, honestly, with a minute left, that might be a bit overconfident. Indeed it is. Beast Mode punishes them. I like the I like the pre-jump. LJ following up as well. Probably unwise. Booming clear from Beast Mode. My goodness, he launched that. And did Chronic and LJ get a bit ahead of themselves here? Did they get a bit too excited? Let's see if they can hold on. Close this one out. Daniels cut the rotation. Beat LJ to the ball. Here comes Beast Mode. Wants the ceiling double. Backboard is there for him as well with the reset. Oh, blocked well by Chronic. I think Beast Mode had that. LJ, three boost. Slow playing. Blind jumps over Beast Mode's bump. Chronic's moved in ne right next to him. Now, you can do that in twos when there's not a lot of momentum in the plate. A bit more safe to advance close to your teammate like that. If you know it's not likely, there's going to be a big 50-50 going over your head. 20 seconds left. LJ and Chronic still the favourites. Good run from LJ down the line. Tries to demo Daniel on the exit. Doesn't contact him and actually Daniel nearly sliced a long shot. LJ expecting Beast Mode to be up jumps early. Beast Mode's on the ground waiting for him but still Chronic and LJ find the clear. Been looking for and it's enough. Chronic is winning. He is just straight up winning. He is right now number one with six wins. Um, I believe out of nine games, I think he's got, yeah, he's got three games left. No, sorry, he's got two games left. That's actually six out of ten, my mistake. And LJ going to 
join Beast Mode and Daniel on 5. Well, this is getting very close. Uh, up next, Beast Mode's only got two more games. The only player who has got three games left. Everybody's got two games apart from two players, LJ and First Killer. Beast Mode, Chronic, and Daniel all have two each. So this is massive uh, for First Killer and LJ, who are about to be teaming together because they can close the gap. Well, they can get LJ first equal and get First Killer within two together. They can do this together. Keeping Beast Mode and Chronic on five and six is a huge game for First Killer LJ. They need to, they need to win here. Well, I missed, I missed Lethemir's comment. Down for Canada, mix up the ironic grinding top 10 leaderboard this season, very determined. I'd love to see that, man. I'd love to see it. Um, I'll put it on the list. There's like there's a lot of countries I'm trying to get through. But yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that the next one of these is actually going to be on Thursday. So we're getting through. We're getting through them. Um, just need to confirm one more player for England this Thursday. I think it's going to happen. Uh, England mix up 2v2 this Thursday early in the afternoon. Well, actually late in the afternoon. Um, but much earlier in the day than this stream right now. Um, but yeah, since I know a lot of people are going to ask, are Jack and Nolly going to play high ping? I, well, no, I didn't I didn't ask them. I, I think that would be silly to get high ping players in when you don't need uh, high ping players. So no, I did not ask Jack and Nolly to play on high ping. Um, there's tons of England 2v2 talent in Europe right now. Um, yeah, Rise is currently injured. He's out of the picture as well. But, um, yeah, Archie, Oski, Joyo, and Cash all confirmed. Just waiting on a reply from one more. And then we'll have confirmed start time. Oh dear, well, that was an absolute disaster for Beast Mode and Chronic. They've double committed in the near post. They both thought that they had the better shot. That's a rare mistake for a team with Beast Mode. It's usually like staying away from his team. There's tons and tons of 2v2 talent in England. I mean, yeah, like I said, Nolly Jack, who are currently in America, they could, they could be in an England, one of those. Um, Rise when he's not injured. We've also got, yeah, Ixo, Relating Wave, Toxic, Noasaki. There's tons and tons of players. Even some more, like, players outside of the RLCS who just grind ranks. Um, yeah, you could easily do two or three England mix-up twos. Same as America, same as KSA, just a super, super deep talent pool right now. Same as France. I think France, KSA, USA, England. Um, yeah, Brazil as well. Like, they're, they're just the deepest talent pools right now with just plethora of players. But like I say all the time, if you want to know exactly when that's going live, uh, give me a follow on Twitter. Enable notifications. I've been tweeting out all of these big streams recently as soon as I can to give you guys as much of a heads up as I can. Um, so you can tune in for the start of it. So yeah, I'll, I'll let you know exactly when that's going to happen and exactly who the fifth player is going to be. Um, probably tomorrow. Yeah, just head, head to my Twitter, give me a follow, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know when that's confirmed. Getting another KSA one. I'd love to do another KSA one. I'd love to do a complete KSA one. We only did 11 games of a KSA one. It's a little bit scuffed um, with delays, but yeah, I'd love to do one. Proper one. I'm ever going to do a boat pyramid, the best of all time. I mean, that would just be like, who's the, the current best players, right? That would that would be kind of, I think, pointless. I think what we should do, instead of a boat pyramid or a goat pyramid, is we should do a, a pot pyramid. Pot with a P. The plastic of all time. Who's the biggest plastic of all time? Because right now, I mean, if we're going to, you're going to chuck two people up there like we did with the last one, you know, Rise is calling out. He's, he's been calling out Jarby for being a, a plastic oat. Um, recently, Dazarin's kind of like joined the conversation after ditching NRG for Gen G, um, the bandwagon. So yeah, maybe maybe Dazarin's on top of the Pope pyramid right now. I'll have to give it some more thought. I've not really calculated the outcomes yet. I need to get into get in the lab with that one. Also, I definitely want to do a uh, top 25 player predictions for the Winter Major um, in the coming weeks as well before the Major occurs. So it's another thing to look forward to. I'll, I'll be announcing that on Twitter also. I have to keep saying this, but if so many people ask, when's this going to happen? When's this going to happen? When's this happening? I'm like, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> follow me on Twitter and you'll know.
How does this work? Pretty simple. 15 games, everybody plays 12 games. Every permutation uh, that is possible with five players in 2v2 will be played once. We're currently on game 12, I believe. Oh no, sorry, we're in game 13. We're actually just three games away from being done here. Unless we have any tie breaks and the players actually want to do them. I'm not going to force them to play them. The French players wanted to do it, but I'm quite happy with the first sequel if they are. <laughs> I don't I don't mind. This has been the re the regain. The regain of first killer in LJ has been the, the real story. We did the regain of Alpha 54 in EU, but LJ and first killer both regaining. Now together, uh, getting a big win against two players who have already put five wins on the board. Beast Mode who started off as the number one player. Struggling to get a win now. I think that's three losses in a row. Unless we can get one past first killer here. It doesn't look likely. Chronix actually made this very difficult for LJ in first, but Beast Mode's got a long way to travel. Love that he's even got time to see what's happening behind him there. Double tap infield. Chronic gonna pop it high. Beast Mode looking for the backboard here. He only gets LJ midair. His defense has improved significantly throughout today. He's really looking like he's found his feet in the lobby, found his wheels. Chronic and Beast Mode still combined for another shot on net. And Beast Mode's going to try and start this one again. This is the longest zero second play we've had by a long way. Once again, Beast Mode off the backboard. Farskiller's up early. He reads the infield pass. Phenomenal read there by Farskiller. A lot of players would have fallen for Beast Mode's fake. Reset. Oh my days, they're still putting shots on net. Beast Mode somehow with a double on target. Chronic followed up with a shot that needed to be saved. They might even keep this one up. Beast Mode has done exactly that. Oh, Chronic couldn't get there, but that was a heroic effort. End-to-end -end stuff, but Beast Mode and Chronic do fall. And that will give LJ the tie with Chronic for the lead. Now, where's everybody who's saying what's Chronic and LJ doing in this lobby now? Where, where are they all gone? I swear there is a lot of you before this stream started saying LJ and Chronic. Somebody even posted when I announced the lineup for this. You know that meme about the uh, or the, uh, the meme with the four soldiers and the clown? Uh, yeah, somebody replied with that when I announced the, the lineup here. I was like, what is that about? Like, LJ and Chronic are absolutely insane in this format. Don't see a lot of uh, yeah. Don't see a lot of LJ and Chronic hate now. Um, <laughs> let's see. This is gonna be. By the way, Beast Mode's last game. Beast Mode from first place can now only, at best, go 50-50. He's currently five wins out of 11 games. This is his 12th and last game. And he can only go for a sequel. Uh, the problem is, if he does that, in the next game, um, Chronic and LJ are going to be playing together against Daniel and First Killer. So let's do, let's do a quick calculation here. If Beast Mode wins this game with First Killer, that will put him on six, first killer on five. And then he would need Daniel and first killer to beat Chronic and LJ in the last game for a complete five-way tie. I believe a five-way tie is on the cards, ladies and gentlemen. We might have everyone on six. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. We just need Beast Mode and first killer to beat um, Daniel and LJ in this game. And then the last game, we would need Daniel and first killer to beat Chronic and LJ. And we have a five-way tie. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, we have a one... Even if you, like, random those outcomes, it's a four, one-fourth chance of a, of a five-way tie. And uh, honestly, looking at the scores at the halfway point, no one would have ever guessed that this is heading towards a five-way tie. Well, he's, mode. He's, he's been in a bit of a losing streak, though. He was doing so well, but he's lost the last three games that he's played. It has all gone downhill from actually he's lost the last four games that he's played. I just realized it's worse than that. Yeah, Beast Mode definitely had a very bad end to this. Can he regain and get to 50-50? I mean that would that's the That's always the break point, isn't it, when you're in a ranked dish session, which this is like I keep saying, it's kind of a ranked session for these guys. Just with uh, good teammates all the time. Whenever you're in a ranked session and you go negative, um, you just feel like it was a waste of time. <laughs> so if Beast Mode could at least go even, I'm sure he'll think, okay, that's fine. At least I didn't, I didn't lose more than I won. I didn't win more than I lost, but at least I didn't lose more than I won. They're looking good in this position here. Beast Mode and First Killer. LJ and Chronic in a bind for a second there before Chronic rips, or LJ, sorry, rips a pinch into the ceiling. First Killer bumps him now. 
Leaving Beast Mode, Daniel 1v1. Beast Mode trying to fake out Daniel, no luck there. Daniel comes away with the play, he's got LJ Hunter boost behind him. Daniel trying to pogo, pop the ball over the last man. Speed of our skiller in Beast Mode, they're feeling confident here. You can tell that this is their game. Playing for the win, playing for the comeback. Oh, if our skiller is a little bit closer to LJ, he might have gone for the bump. Ball's hardly left the orange half this game. Daniel, almost, well just briefly for a second there, did manage to get the ball into the blue half. Big block for beast mode. Decides to play the ball. A lot of players would have gone for the boost there, but beast mode spotted the shot opportunity. Crushes the challenge. Tries to pre-jump first killer's pass and then parks up next to Daniel. Oh, Daniel's recovered and saved the point blank range shot anyway. Now here's LJ in the breakaway. Defensive pinch from beast mode. It's gone back middle off LJ's touch. Well, that was a bit wayward from beast mode, but it ended up working. Arskiller lunges off the wall, only finds LJ now. Just doesn't have the boost to go for the redirect. He might not have to though, Daniel goes for it. LJ pops it middle to no one though. Where's the third man? He's thinking, where's Arsenal? Oh wait, we're not playing threes. Also, they were playing threes. Arsenal would probably be demoing the goalie, let's be honest. He's not gonna be back there. What was LJ thinking? Oh, he's gone past one here. First killer manages to connect the challenge before LJ could regain control of the ball. First killer. A lot more of his touches have been very effective in this game. Wants to solo play on Dan. Daniel actually makes a 1v2 play on them. That's somewhat open. Beast Mode's going to spawn, but not in time. It might be LJ who comes out on top. I remember Daniel plays against LJ in the very next game. So if he wins this game with LJ, LJ goes to seven. Daniel does have a chance of going to, to seven as well if he beats him in the final game. Could be Daniel and LJ joint victors. What do you mean catching strays? What's wrong with demoing the goalkeeper? Like, uh, that's a perfectly good play. Not, there's no, nothing stray about that. That's a compliment. Arsenal catching compliments. Keep demoing goalkeepers king. <laughs> Beast Mode loses control, and it's an immediate punish from Daniel and LJ. LJ, happy to lurk upfield, and even with no boost, he's easily able to generate enough power thanks to Daniel's accurate pass. A minute left for first clear in Beast Mode. They've had so many chances this game. So much time in the orange half, but a frustrating time it was for the most part. But they just could not get the ball past. Daniel and LJ. They're going to need to do it now to avoid the worst possible end to this series. First killer's flick's gone high. Beast mode prioritizing the bump there. Daniel bumping first killer on the recovery. And LJ's clamped the goal shut. No way through for Beast mode at first. One final push that they need to work, but it's not going to. LJ is on an absolute tear. Daniel's right there with him. He said, if Daniel's been a very consistent performer throughout today, getting good wins early, good wins late. Still in a shot to get first equal here in the final game. But that is the end of Beast Mode's challenge for the win. He's going to be pretty unhappy about how that's ended for him. If that's a... Uh, if that is going to be confirmed last place at the end of today, last equal. How things stand, we have LJ in the lead, Chronic and Daniel on six apiece. And now we're going to have LJ and Chronic playing together in the last game. So Chronic cannot win. Chronic can only get second place. If Chronic and LJ win this last game, Chronic will be second, LJ will be first, Daniel will be third, Beast Mode, first killer. Fourth, fifth. Um, Daniel, however, he can tie for the win if he beats LJ Chronic with First Killer and his team. That would mean First Killer ties last place with Beast Mode, and Daniel would tie first place with LJ, which is actually exactly what happened. In uh, that's the exact same score distribution as we had in the France version of this. So let's see who it's going to be. Are we going to have a unanimous winner, or are we going to have? A two-way tie.
Was it Alpha 54? I think it was Alpha 54 in Europe who was on four points going into the last game. Um, or no, it was Exotic. So first killer is Exotic, isn't he? Because Exotic had to play for his honor in the last game. He was on four points out of 11, and then he managed to win the last game to go five out of 12. And that had him finishing last equal as opposed to unanimous last. So first killer in the exact same position that Exotic was in going into the last game in the French matchup. Um, it looks like, uh, I think Daniel is in the same position Zen was in. And LJ is Monkey Moon. If, 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 if we're looking at the comparison to French players, LJ is Monkey Moon trying to win outright. Daniel is Zen trying to tie for the win. First killer is Exotic trying to not finish last solo. Who's, who's Chronic then? Chronic must be Batira, I believe. Is he Batira? I think he's Batira. Yeah. We followed a very different script throughout the day, but we've ended up in a similar place with very close uh, scores. Possibly the same scores. Yeah, LJ Chronic. Looking to finish strong. They actually do not have the ability to go 3-0 today. There's only one combination today that has gone 3-0 in all their games. That was Chronic Daniel, the best combination of players in the NA lobby. Well, Chronic's Poe going here. I can't imagine for the life of me that that's a good idea. And that might be uh, the, this, the, the signs of desperation. He's thinking, oh, this is just rubbish. I can't win. I'm just helping LJ win. I don't want to help LJ win. <laughs> it looks like he, he is trying to help LJ win because they are winning. <laughs> LJ might not need any help. He's in an absolute tear at the tail end of the, these games. Insane comeback um, after a slow start. I think he went one out of four at the start here. That's not the defensive synergy they were looking for. Daniel with a little pass inwards, but Chronic's the one who finished it off. He tried to back pass to LJ. It's actually just first killer waiting in the middle. I've ever asked LJ about ones. I'm pretty sure LJ doesn't play ones. No, I've never asked him. FK looks tilted. I wouldn't say so. I mean, uh, first killer is trying not to be last. <laughs> he, just, he wants to be last equal, not last. The last equal is, uh, you know, 5 out of 12. A lot better than 4 out of 12. Just looks a lot better, at least. Um... First killer is a, a real, com a true competitor. He he really doesn't know how to switch off his competitive uh, streak. Like I've really never seen him in any instance not giving it 100%. Daniel intelligently backs off, knowing Chronic probably has the ball. Good chase back from first killer, but it's more work needed. Was saved by first killer as well. LJ threatening the double. First killer bumped Chronic out of the air, turned around. Or could actually, he just kept going and saved LJ's shot as well. Yeah, five is only two away from seven, but if he's on four, LJ's on eight, which is if, if double. Yeah, it'd be, it would look a lot worse. <laughs> it would look much worse if um, LJ's on eight and... Uh, oh dear, well, direct shot. Chronic passing the ball to Daniel there. Don't think he expected LJ to miss it, to be fair, so he wasn't lining up for the shot. Anywhere else would have been better. Yeah, those are the two worlds that we're in. First killer trying to go on to five wins. Keep LJ on seven. Yeah, I agree with the uh, chat there. Yeah, four, four to eight does not look anywhere near as respectable. I mean, it isn't. It's, it's half. Yeah, what would we do then? I mean, I don't know if these guys want a tie break. Maybe they're just going to be like, ah, I'm pretty happy with first equal, to be honest. <laughs> I don't mind. LJ's going to say, I don't mind being first equal with Daniel. Because the tiebreak would be uh, LJ and uh, Daniel playing with. Well, one of them would be playing with um, First Killer. One of them, one of them would be playing with Beast Mode. I'm sure, Daniel would want to play with Beast Mode, and uh, LJ First Killer would have to pull off a Monkey Moon and uh, Alpha performance. Oh, this is dangerous territory. Chronic does well to keep it in the corner. We've got a minute left. Still, a possible decisive finish here if LJ and Chronic. Emerge the victors. Near post double attempt by Chronic. Oh, he's got the accuracy, but first killer's there. Chronic diving back to the play. Again, notice, not rotating back post. He's going straight back towards the ball to try and help LJ out a little bit in some way. Chronic dropping the ball backwards. LJ's ready for it. 
Set up for the flick wasn't what he wanted. He's actually turned a bit slowly here. Leaves Chronic alone for a second. But once again, rotating straight back towards the ball. Making it a bit easier for his goalkeeper to know what to do. LJ going way up the field looking for a boost here. Thought better of it and now he goes back. First clear, not for the first time this game. Denies Chronic. Close range air dribble. Here comes Daniel with a reset double. Oh, it's an own goal from Chronic. I think it might have been going in. Or own goal from LJ, actually. I think it might have been going in anyway. But that is a terrible ending for them. I'm not sure, to be honest. It might have hit the bar. <laughs> Chronic was in the area. But what can you do? I mean, what are you supposed to do? Just not jump and let Daniel reset double? I mean, he's got to jump. So, unfortunate scenario there for LJ. Ruskillers tried to pinch this wide. It's gone nowhere. Oh, what a play. Chronic and LJ connect a 1-2 pass after Ruskillers' pinch fails. Brilliant awareness. And look at the accuracy of LJ's return pass. Overtime, eight seconds away. Can we avoid a kickoff goal? It's a double 50-50. Cringe. Not going to have any follow-up power on the flick, though. Chronic wants a little bit more here, though. Calls for the back pass. They're not going to be punished for it, but... Into overtime we go. Why am I calling it cringe? Because a double 50-50 is like the most cringe outcome you could possibly get from a 2v2 kickoff. <laughs> it's, just, it's just random, isn't it? It's the worst, worst possible outcome. Oh, big dunk from Daniel. He might give a go. He might have a go at this. No, the bounce wasn't what he wanted. If that bounce flat, he was going to send it. He's waiting to see... Killer off the ceiling. He's got Daniel in front of him here. He's got the entire enemy team jumping and actually making a great play after panicking in the first instance. So Chronic and LJ both flew up in the air there. Chronic got a piece of the first touch. LJ landed to block Daniel's follow-up. That looked like the end. We actually continue. LJ. Has so to be very careful with his boost here. He actually got underneath the ball, invited the dunk, and Daniel obliged. Again, LJ and Chronic both in the air. Surely they're conceding. No, LJ recovers and gets the ball clear. This is still a very bad position for them. A hard clear is needed. A hard clear is what they get to buy some more time. LJ, sealing recovery into a challenge. Chronic and LJ fighting for the midfield. Don't want to get stuck in goal. Against players like First and Daniel. And Chronic's left LJ with a lot to do. LJ catches the ball well on the backboard. He's done pretty much all you can ask for there. Now he's bumped First Killer a mile. Chronic flicks it in. We have a unanimous winner. And it's LJ. He's proven all the doubters wrong. I'm calling you all out one more time. I saw so many people asking, what's this guy doing in the lobby? He's not on the same level. Well, you don't break the world record for 2v2 MMR without knowing how to play 2v2. LJ wins with 8 out of 12. Um, Chronic in second, Daniel in third, Beast Mode in fourth. I was really wrong. I thought Beast Mode was going to win this. It looked like I would be on a, on the money with that early, but then terrible end for Beast Mode. He won uh, five of his first seven games and he lost five in a row. He just fell off at the end here, unfortunately. But LJ, what a win streak he went on. He won one, two, three four of his last games. He won the last four games he played. He went on a break in game 11, came back and won four games.